What's up guys, let's talk iPhone 8. It's been a while since my last updates video and a lot has changed. We've learned a lot of new leaks and rumors of this upcoming iPhone that I wanted to go over with you in this video. So before I get into that though, I wanted to show you a beautiful concept we've been working on with the Bro King and this is inspired by the iPhone 3G and 3GS design. As I'm sure you'll notice, this thing looks heavily influenced by it. And wow, what a look. So. This is the iPhone edition, the iPhone 8, the Pro model, if it were to be released by Steve Jobs back in 2008. It's got a jet black aluminum backing, so the wireless charging would have to go, but in return, you'd have the most comfortable phone ever as it would curve on the back and conform to your hand. We removed these speakers from the bottom and placed them on the top of the phone as, you know, it just seems like a more logical choice. You have outwards facing speakers beaming your sound straight to you instead of to your hand where you're gonna be covering it up. We do have the dual lens camera on the back. The buttons are inspired chrome-wise by the 3G again. And I gotta say, it looks absolutely stunning. So major props to the Bro King. It's also got a curved display that's taking up most of the front of the phone, but without actually copying the Samsung Galaxy S8. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. Worked very hard on this. Anyways, let's get to those juicy rumors. Now, the very first thing I wanted to say is this is a new camera, guys. I do apologize if things aren't set up properly. I'm using it for like the first time for this sort of video here. Uh, so do work with me on that. But the elephant in the room here, the Samsung Galaxy S8, it was just announced. You know, there was a lot of tension already before it was announced between the Galaxy S8 and iPhone 8. You know, how are they going to uh, react feature wise? How are they going to compare? Is the iPhone going to copy them? Is the Galaxy going to copy the iPhone? I got to give props to Samsung. They didn't really do much copying here whatsoever. The 3D touch for the uh, physical button feeling on the bottom row of the home button for the Galaxy S8 is sort of 3D touch, but that's literally the only comparison or the similarity between the iPhone and Galaxy. So it's an amazing phone. I'll give them props. It looks so cutting edge, so high tech. It's going to be so difficult for Apple to, you know, compete or so it seems, but there are some rumors that I'm going to talk about in this video that say otherwise. It might even look better than the Galaxy S8. So a lot of people are saying the iPhone 8 is dead in the water. There's no way, but guys, come on, you know, have some faith in Apple. The Galaxy S7 looks more futuristic than the iPhone as is already, and yet the iPhone sells like hotcakes. So do have some faith in Apple here. I think they will do well, despite the fact that Galaxy is kicking their ass seemingly already. Now in my mind, I have several things that Apple can do to keep ahead of the game and these are the things that are rumored that the iPhone 8 will have. First off, a built-in fingerprint sensor in the display. So instead of putting one on the back, have one on the surface of the phone so you don't have to fiddle with that fingerprint sensor on the back of the phone like the S8. Two, have a truly bezel-less design. So instead of even having the eight millimeter a little section on the bottom and top of the Galaxy, just have a full screen as rumored. That would make the iPhone look so amazingly good. And I think the 3D modeling front-facing camera on the iPhone will be a big winner. So the Galaxy S8 can be bypassed with a photo. You know, Apple's solution would be to model your face and instead of a photo being able to bypass it, you'd actually have to have a 3D physical model of the face, which is much more difficult to bypass this security with. So Apple's going to focus hugely on security with this 3D modeling camera. And those are the three points that could, you know, elevate the iPhone ahead of the Galaxy S8 in my opinion. So shout out to Ryan Jones who put this together. This is actually super cool. So this is a size comparison of what the iPhone 8 would look like based on the math provided by Ming-Chi Ko, the screen sizes and everything, the bezel-less design. If considering all of those rumors were to be true, this is what it would look like. And it looks so Good. I mean, it's unbelievably small compared to the outgoing iPhones, but compared to the Galaxy even, this would be a more futuristic design even. And a super cool rumor provided by Barclays Analysts is saying that all three models of the iPhone coming this year will have a True Tone display. That means they'll have the sensors compatible for it and the software inside. So much like the iPad Pro 9.7, it'll basically take your color temperature of the display and adjust it to your ambience instead of just a sunset sunrise schedule currently with night shift. So I think that'd be super cool. It was rumored to happen on the 7 series uh, earlier last year. It didn't happen, so now it's going to be happening this year on the iPhone 8. And that's something I'm welcoming with open arms. And there's been word floating around on the internet about the naming again. So 
We already established that the iPhone 8, the high-end model, could be called the iPhone Edition, but what about the iPhone 7S? The 7S just doesn't seem to stick. Starting with the MacBook, Apple killed the air naming, the, you know, the, <laughs> the word after MacBook. Essentially, it's just MacBook now. And now most recently, the iPad series. So Apple ditched the iPad Air 2 or 3 naming scheme. It's just called the iPad now. So why wouldn't Apple do that to the base 7S and 7S Plus models? So they're just going to call them iPhone and the higher end model, the iPhone edition. Totally makes sense now. What they're going to do the year after that, who knows? Maybe they'll stick with the iPhone naming and just have Series 2 in the bottom. I don't know whatever they do, but you know, the naming makes sense. iPhone and iPhone edition. And guys, there is so much junk out there in terms of news and rumors that you got to really filter through it. Uh, most recently coming from iDrop News. So these guys are claiming that they spoke to a Foxconn insider that has seen a prototype of the iPhone and they're saying three features have been confirmed by this guy. The fingerprint sensor will not be on the front of the phone. It'll be on the back. The back will be made of metal, not glass as rumored. And the rear cameras on the back will be vertical. You know, this is highly doubtful coming from a new source that just sprouted up very recently. They're not even established or anything like that. So take some rumors you hear around on the internet with a grain of salt. And despite all of the rumors, all of the information we've heard that the new iPhone edition might come with a dual edged curved display, much like the Galaxy series, it might not even happen at all. It'll have a mostly flat portion of the display with a 2.5D glass drop off. In case you don't know what that means, it basically means it'll stay how it is on the iPhones. They have a very, very gentle curve at the edge that instead of sloping like the galaxies is just very subtle. So it won't help with the usability of the phone whatsoever. You won't get any new features with that. It'll just be for purely visual, small, small uh, slope at the end. So this is coming from an IHS market analyst who's saying the reason being because of development costs. Apple won't be able to keep up with the huge demand for this iPhone. So instead of curving the display, they'll make it easy for themselves and just have a very gentle 2.5D slope. And this was later confirmed by Nikki Mingchiko and and even another reputable analyst company. So basically everyone's saying that it won't have a dual edge curved display, just, just how it is right now, but with an organic LED panel. And talking about demand, the iPhone 8, according to Digitimes, will strain the entire world's supply of organic LED panels. To be precise, 14%. Now, Samsung will be making these panels for the iPhone and Apple is going to be taking 56% of their production for this iPhone. So just to give you a little bit of scale on how big the iPhone 8 is going to be this year, it's literally going to affect other businesses. A lot of other companies that make phones will not even be able to use organic LEDs because the price will go up because of, you know, the availability of this thing is just all going to be going to Samsung and Apple mostly. So a lot of companies are going to be sticking with LCD later this year just because of this. It's kind of crazy. And this one is most likely not going to happen. It's probably fluff. Coming from ET News, they are claiming that the new iPhone will pay homage to earlier versions with a water drop-like design. So much like the concept I showed you guys, essentially it starts here and wraps around and ends up here. So very similar to an iPhone 3G like, it's probably not going to happen, but sure, it would look amazing if it did. Now the price of the Samsung Galaxy S8 may really put the iPhone 8 in trouble as it's undercutting it by about 100, maybe even $150. Starting at about $850 to $900, the Galaxy S8 Plus, which would be in direct competition with the iPhone edition, is really going to entice some customers. I don't want to dish out so much money. So it was a very good move on Samsung's part to price their flagship below the iPhone edition. Also, why the iPhone 8 will cost $1,000. We went over this in my last video, but I wanted to add another item to the list, and that would be the new sensor for the True Tone display. So among all of these features, we're gonna have another page where we're gonna start adding things to as more and more technologies are added and developed to the iPhone 8, or as we learn about them. The iPhone 8 might actually be heavily invested in AR technology. So Bloomberg is reporting that a lot of the new features coming with the iPhone camera are going to focus heavily on AR, such as taking a picture and then and selecting the depth of focus after you do that in real time and not actually doing it digitally like most Android phones do. So it's not a new feature, but Apple would be doing it better than existing ones. So this is among other features, but basically the new iPhone will focus heavily on AR and 3D modeling in their cameras. And there might actually be some good news regarding the release of the iPhone 8 coming later this year. So um, Barclays analyst is actually saying that it might be releasing alongside the 7S and 7S Plus uh, with a very limited release. So you might not even be able to get one as it'll sell out 
within seconds. But he's saying that the full release with all of the devices will more stock will be happening in quarter four, so around December. And here's actually a really cool patent. This is in a way very similar to DeX with Samsung where you can dock your device and run it like a desktop on a monitor. So this is sort of a dumb shell of a MacBook that you would place your iPhone in and use it as a trackpad on this device with a possible GPU built in to power the display. So this is a patent that may suggest the future with the iPhone 8 or devices past it where you can dock them and use them as a computer with this, maybe even a separate dock. But it's really cool that Apple is looking out for this. Now production of the A11 chip is starting this month in April by TSMC. And this is going to be the 10 nanometer structure. It's going to be more efficient, more powerful and matching the Galaxy. And the last thing I wanted to mention is Unicode 10.0. It could come with 69 new emojis, including a T-Rex, of uh, Dracula, mermaid, among other things. So if you guys were needing an emoji fix, that'll be coming later this year. But anyways, guys, just wanted to say thanks for watching. Uh, that's the latest on the iPhone.